in a world in crisis. Can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. to a show called Hate, a podcast in which we explore love, hate and everything in between in search of greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I'm Nick. I'm Chris. And uh, hey, hello and welcome to episode two. Hey, hey, hey. We made it's it happen. Number two already. Live the dream. Can you believe it? So with the second episode, I mean, I think the format is officially... Now it's a series. ...cemented now. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're in there. This in, is it for in, a, in forever. For it's, not like, it's not like any member of the team is about to be disappearing for, for like three weeks. Three weeks. Oh yeah. yes, I hadn't thought uh, about that. I hadn't thought about that either. No, no yeah. selfish, no. <laughs> I don't think you thought about this podcast at all, Nick. <laughs> but seriously, we, we wish you uh, nothing but happiness. Thank you. As you enter into... My, my wedded slash honeymoonal life. Yeah, it's very Hon- nice. Honeymoonal being a word. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. <laughs> well, for it, I guess uh, just to uh, kind of really drive home this format, which we're so proud of. Just smash it in. Uh, if you've listened to episode one, maybe you need a reminder. If you're new, hello, welcome to the show. Hi but there. the deal is, we are going to be discussing our loves... And hates, and deciding whether they are worthy of mm. their respective emotion. And you can join along at home. Uh, tweet us using the hashtags show called love and show called hate. I think that's quite self explanatory. Yes, yeah. no, I, yes, I, mean, I, I don't agree. You, but, but on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> when you said follow along at home, I thought you were going to advise people to smash through their walls with their fists. But, but no, the hashtag's fine. Is that yeah. a little spoiler of what you got in mind? Um, it's a little spoiler of what I've been doing all week. No, it's not. Oh, I see. How, I'm so full of hate. How I used to be. This show has literally saved my house. <laughs> mm. Well, you said taking a, a sip of coffee, which I do love. Delicious coffee. Love. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, hashtags at home. Join along. Yes. Uh, we've had some user input, which we'll be referring to later in the show. Indeed we will. But I guess as we always do, I say always, our second time round, should we but, dive straight into love? That's, uh, it's a love. That was that Eight. was the opposite way around. Oh my god! Oh no! no. The exact oh, opposite. Of what we don't have a format do. after this all. This is this is the worst format I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, should we dive into hate? Let's dive into Let's hate. Let's dive in straight yes. in head first. Does anybody have? A, I mean, yes. Yes. Oh, Chris is. I'm going because I can't contain it any longer. Lead us. Um, I dislike or hate, if you will, social media ambiguity. <gasps> Gas. Is this like when people do a post deliberately not explaining exactly what, uh, that? Yeah, and then they want. They oh, want I just feel. I just feel awful. Oh, I can't believe it. And then you'll go. Oh, really? Are you okay? And they'll go. Don't want to talk about. Don't it. want to talk about it. Or I'll message you. Yeah. <sighs> just, just if you're that upset about it and you put it on social media, just tell us. Yeah. It's probably not that interesting. Does that happen? Yeah, all the time. Oh, Who yeah. do you follow? Um, emos. I'm not yeah, saying emos. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't have to name anyone. I just. Uh, like, I, but you see them, oh, yeah. le- maybe less so now, because yeah, people was, have cottoned on to it, but certainly back in the day, you would certainly see Certainly a, a few lot. years back, it was, it was something I saw a lot of. Like, do you not really, do, you, do, do your circles not show this to you, John? Okay, well, maybe, I'm, maybe I, it might be because I exclusively follow sex bots, which, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I like. I like you know where you stand with sex bots. Yeah, you like the level yeah. of conversation. You know? <laughs> Great. <laughs> I remember, um, Link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, a mutual friend of ours on Twitter once uh, shared like something a sex bot sent to him saying, and she just said, one day I want to have sex on the moon. And he just said, I admire her moxie. Like, she's really <laughs> she went for it. Aiming, aiming high. I do it with football sometimes and I, I slag someone off uh, for my football team. And then a sex bot will like it. And I just think, oh, she knows. <laughs> she, 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 she knows that Adrian Pennock should favour a 4-4-2 <laughs> formation. <laughs> well, do you, when you... Um, it just is a little Twitter etiquette kind of thing. Like when you... As you, in your own words, when you slag off someone from your team, yes, I believe that's the correct football. That was very good. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. No, before they put the ball in the cupboard, (laughs) file that away. (laughs) Field cupboard. Do you? Oh no, goal. Sorry. Do you tag them in? That seems a bit rude. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I I slag people off to their faces on Twitter. They deserve it. I've written them a strongly worded email not so long ago as well. In fact, I I really, I think I saw that. Yeah, to the club. Oh. Saying I'm not going to come again while the current manager's in place. Wow. Wow. Which is strong. Yeah, and it was published on a website. Gasp. So there you go. Was it your own Cheer City's it, website? No, it was a fan <laughs> website, yeah. It wasn't my website. It was someone I know's website, but it's a popular Gillingham fan website. Oh, okay. So that's a pretty big deal then. So do you so when you so if you see someone on Twitter 
So the setup is they have to say Twitter or like, Facebook. It'll be like, oh, I just feel awful. I just, oh, I can't believe it. Oh. It's more Facebook than Twitter, isn't it? Yeah. Because Facebook's the, the place, I feel. like yeah. people, people go more emotional on Facebook. It's more me specifically. Whereas other people will be like, on Twitter, it's a bit more business, isn't it? A bit more yeah. Or yeah. general I'm just, I'm just so down. I'm just... They generally don't say why. Well, don't put it then. Well, can can you can you say why in 140 characters on Facebook? On that's Facebook. On Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter's a, a different story. Plus, you can do threads now, John. Yeah, John. Yes, that's true. No <laughs> threads. Now. I, I, I'm familiar with the contemporary social. I mean, social I, <laughs> I, I, there are some people I follow on Facebook, and, and they'll they'll be having a hard time. But they'll and either they won't post about it at all. Exactly. Yeah. Or they will post about it, and they and they'll the reason they're posting about it is because they want to talk about it. That's if, uh, as long as you say what it's about. Yeah, I get it. But if saying it's not saying what it's about is just attention grasping. So, well, well, they'll but, just post an emoji. But then, crying, but then, it? surely, if someone says I'm feeling a bit down, mm. then you you reply and say, "Hey, it's all right. It'll be fine." And they go, "Why cheers. should I have to do they that?" Go, cheers, buddy. Maybe you don't. Is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> maybe why should I have to do that for someone who doesn't have the consideration of my time to tell me what's actually wrong with them? So you think you've got it bad? I've got to listen <laughs> to you. <all> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You think you've got problems? I had to listen to them. Okay, so but would you? So it's not that they're unhappy. You would just rather they explain themselves. Yes, is, is what you're I would. Saying. I would rather they said why they were unhappy, so I don't have to write to them. See, when I'm unhappy, I don't go to Facebook. Yeah, exactly. And I don't. I mean, I'm not give saying that anyone call. who's unhappy and then posts on Facebook is wrong to do so. I'm not saying that. I am. But <laughs> but like, but I'm saying that. When I'm unhappy, the last thing I think about doing is going to Facebook with it. Mm. Like I do always think that's 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 just a different thing for me. Like I don't know. I'm... Are you looking for like if you were unhappy and you took it to? Because I, I think my mm. I don't know. Often like if something's annoying me, mm. I find yeah. But an annoyance is good because that can be like other people can climb. But on that's a but that's a specific yeah. thing you say. This is annoying me. Are you looking for validation or kind of? That's like... what this show is basically. Yeah. yeah. Or someone... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be hateful. If I, if I, for all right, if okay. you mentioned the show, right. if I came on just then and said, "Oh, something's bothering me," I don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'd move be, on. Yeah. yeah. It like, wouldn't make for much of a show, would Chris, it? Chris, this was the worst input you've ever given yeah, to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'd be like, "Oh, well, t- tell you us." You would about say it. that's ambiguous, and then you'd say, "Oh, you're fired." Or something. Because bottom line is, social media is a broadcasting medium. Yes. The point of it, like I've heard it talked about, like it's like opening your own personal newspaper every morning. The stories in it are about people you care about, right? That makes sense. Yeah. So why on earth would you ever have an editorial piece in a newspaper that was just like something's up and I ain't saying? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess. I guess if you're going to turn it into more of a, I guess the pro. I, I'm kind of like I agree with you, but I, I think that the problem I'm having is I don't think I can see a solution. You oh no! I, mean? I don't like, think. I don't no. think there's. No, a, I don't think there's. A, it's just. It's just. It just. It just grinds Chris's gears. It does. We're sure just kind does. of doomed, really. I was trying to spin it into gold. I was trying to find like some something positive in there. Like how could we fix it? But nah. Because I often find like the uh, and weirdly the flip side of that, I find almost too much positivity <laughs> is a problem. Because yes, well, this is nobody wants to know how well you're doing. Yeah, this yeah. is the age old. You think everyone has got a way better life than you do, thanks to social media in the 21st well, century. Well, I, I think um, I'm 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 muting people now on Twitter. Yeah, oh yeah, not because I've, I've I and that. it's like I I, I like you. I, I genuinely I why you like you. Why you to any of my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> it's like I I like you. I I think you're a nice person. I enjoy your company in person. But it just so happens that you have chosen Twitter as your platform for shouting, like tweeting four times a minute mm. about your love of a particular thing. Yeah. And at first I'm like, that's kind of cool. That's, that's great. I appreciate your enthusiasm. But when you get to your feed and all you are seeing... I'm starting to think you're talking about me. Yeah. And I'm my starting football. To think no, I don't, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't follow you. <laughs> he didn't, actually. He's one of my more recent followers, John. What, on Twitter? On Twitter. You unfollowed me for some reason. Was no, I, I following you before... John was. Well, John was following me initially. Oh, okay. And then you followed me, and then he didn't follow me, and now he does again. I, no, I, I didn't. I'm going to prove it to you. I've been meaning to bring this up, and I thought this podcast <laughs> would be the perfect time to do it. No, from the bottom of, bottom of my heart. I did not. No, I know. It's probably one of those weird well, things. Well, it's like there's something weird on our, uh, our big punch account, button. where it's, uh, if, you, if you check it on, like, <laughs> it's something weird where you decide you don't like someone and uh, unfollow them. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. press the button. It's one of those emotional want. responses. Just sort it out. But it's, there's something weird on our um, the app with. Does it still say we have zero, we're following no one? It says we're following two people. What's this? Our big punch account. Oh, really? Which but then not... if you go into our followers list, they're all there, aren't they? Yeah, they're all there. But it just says zero in it. Yeah, it's that's really weird. weird. Yeah, I don't understand. Why would I unfollow you when you're my only window into football? <laughs> like, because, uh, because of that. No, I... I... Pitch husbandry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they call it. What? A pitch husbandry. That's football, right? 
Right. Whatever. No. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would genuinely believe you if that was the case. Uh, yeah, well. Like maybe the art of looking after her. Oh, a pitch. A pitch is yeah. pitch husbandry. It's easy to get confused. There's a there's a wasp in here. Is there a wasp in here? Oh, it's just no. down there. I don't like wasps. That could be the new hate. That could That's be the, the new hate. hate. Or we could ask him what his hate he's is. Got, he's got a chance to Probably sort of beans. come back on that hate, though, hasn't Go he? Go like, where's... Don't, 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 it's under your chair. Don't waft it towards me. <laughs> we could pause for a minute while we deal with a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, wasp is dealt with. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so what are we talking about yet? Pitch husbandry. Yes. Do we have a verdict then? Have we exhausted this already? I think me and Nick are on the same page. I'm on the same page with yeah. this here, yeah. I think... I, I do agree with you. Yeah. I do agree with you. I just I I feel that I can sympathise with people who maybe do not want to <clears throat> elucidate. Yeah, like I can sympathise with that. But problem. then why say anything? Yeah, why well, exactly? It yeah. seems to me like it's just a little bit attention seeking. It's like I want some attention, but I don't really want to talk about the thing. And it's like, well, in that case, you you're not coming to the social media place to talk about your problem, which would be fine. Yeah. You're instead coming just to use your problem as a way to get some sympathy. I guess. I do you know. find? I mean, like what? What is your <clears throat> relationships at present with Twitter and social media? Not help, not good. No, no. I, it's not. I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah. He said as he solicits people to yeah. join in the conversation <laughs> using, using hashtags. But... I tend to do more arguing than anything else on Twitter. <laughs> oh, okay. At the moment. Which is so hateful. Because I yeah I just <laughs> argue with people. I have which is why I follow you and have followed you continuously for well, years on Twitter. Well, yeah. yeah. For the last I couple of weeks. I enjoy your fearlessness. <laughs> yes. You get in there. It's bold. Sure. And your. Chutzpah <laughs> in, uh, in attacking public figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember and how? a mutual friend of ours uh, who should remain nameless. Uh, let's call him J. P. Um No, no, no. No, use his first J- name. James P. J. J- no, J- J- P. Pegram's too obvious. <laughs> once, once sent a, uh, a critical direct tweet to a manager. I believe of a of a football club. Um, I think <laughs> I think it was um, Jeffrey Boycott, who's a legendary England cricketer. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, just slagging him off the football team he supports, <laughs> and he actually wrote back to him and he called him a moron. <laughs> <laughs> and, and having spoken to Pegram after the fact, he was like, "Yeah, I think." That's oh, it's his header picture. The reply is Pegram's head is header oh, is picture it really? still. That's, really? why, that's why I follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's very proud of that one. <laughs> I've, I someone shared something the other day, and it ended up going a little bit viral. But it's someone saying uh, it's okay to switch off because the human brain was not designed to process this much pain and suffering <laughs> on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah, that seems right. I just, I just sort of, I'm. It's not in my habit anymore to check Twitter and Facebook. Like I have to suddenly go, oh, I should do that. I, mm. like, I have to go out of my way to check them because. I don't know. There's just if if I if I if I open that Pandora's box, then just suddenly loads of things are like, oh yeah, I should probably talk to them about. Oh, and I haven't, and they're they're complaining about this. Should I worry about that? And oh, I feel really sorry for that. I know, and that's really awful. That's horrible. That's a horrible picture. Why did you share that? And it's just like overload. You know, I can't deal with it. And so much of it is is pain and suffering, and and sometimes legitimately or it's the opposite and i'm a horrifically jealous person and yes. someone's like you know here's the latest piece of artwork i've drawn and i'm like that is so much better than anything i've ever drawn ever in my whole life i just want to give up and very, throw myself down the stairs it's very hard to not get the envy it's very hard to not yeah. just be instantly envious of which is a big and famous thing which apparently everyone feels so it's not like i'm alone in that like it's a psychologically thing yes oh, i was gonna say oh, oh here we go no that's fine <laughs> no i i compartmentalize my social media accounts oh, okay. facebook is Big events and things I find funny. Okay. That I've done. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Twitter is football and arguing. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Um, and Instagram is Star Wars. Oh, okay. okay. Fair okay. enough. That's so fine. I don't I don't bludgeon everyone with Star Wars on other Yeah, compartmentalization is pretty good, actually. That's a good idea. I actually moved my... Because I, I went through a phase of like constantly deleting and reinstalling the Twitter app on my phone. Because it's like, I can't live with it. That's probably why you unfollowed me. That's probably how that happened. Yeah, maybe. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. I'm not bitter. No, it's I'm not. I'm not. It's not. It's not like you me. keep bringing it up. No, no, yeah. it's not. I brought it up now, and now I can't stop. But I um like so I would delete it, reinstall it, delete it, reinstall it, and I'm I'm now I what it is I move Twitter into a folder on my phone just called Don't. <laughs> and, uh, the idea being that like it will give me an extra like it's one Barrier. extra click. It's like when you drunk dial and it's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, but, but what's weird is that. I, I, I'm trying to monitor the way I use my phone. So I'm thinking like, if I'm going on Twitter, I want to be posting something. I want to be responding to people. I'm not going to browse it. I'm just not going to browse it anymore because it's just a litany of horrors. Uh, <laughs> and instead, I'm telling myself this and I get the phone out of my pocket. And then before I check, 
I've got Twitter open. Yeah. You know, like like the You've muscle memory in my hand. <laughs> has, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, it's already click, click. And, and I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm like, how did that happen? I didn't want to do that. Now I'm here. Yeah. And I can't yeah. look away because, oh, that's just caught my eye. And what's that? And who's this? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like any five minutes where I'm bored, I'm like, I need to, I should be, I could just be browsing right now. Yeah. I just need like a little... I mean, a little while back, I did a... Uh, you know, I was playing into your compartmentalization. Oh, thing. yes. I did a big sort of curl on Facebook in an attempt to make Facebook about friends. Because yes. my problem, being like a comic book artist who's desperate for like success and appreciation of his work, I, <laughs> I, was, I was using all social media platforms as a way to promote myself. Because, yeah. you know, certainly when... In, in any sort of creative or business, personal business endeavor, it's a really good way to do it on one level, but also you were also going to annoy a lot of your close friends who know full well that you're an artist and that you draw stuff, but they don't really care. Like, why do you have to badger them with it as well? So I wanted to sort of try and make Facebook more into a place where I talked about friend social stuff and less business and made Twitter, that was the plan, yeah. Twitter into more of a business thing, which I think I've done to some extent. I do still post artwork on Facebook, but I often do it as a, hey, I want to show my friends yeah. what I've drawn rather than hey, subscribe to my thing or back my Kickstarter. Well, I, you know, I didn't really shout about any of our Kickstarters on Facebook. But you've been trying to... I don't I don't Instagram. I don't... Oh, like... No, no, I've got into Instagram. Can That's you... quite safe. It doesn't yeah. overload my brain. Could you explain? It's all pictures, isn't it? It's all pictures. Yeah, but you can put a, a caption at the bottom of every picture yes. you post. It's kind, of like, it's kind of like Twitter without the conversation aspect. <laughs> okay, that, that, that sounds good yeah that sounds quite so it's appealing. basically you 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 open instagram and your timeline is full of people sharing images and you follow them because you like the images you like they what share. they're saying ah, it's literally it's literally as simple why as that. i use it for star wars so what do you get you get pictures of star wars basically yeah and i put mine on because i've got my various models and what do have people you. do people follow and respond they to do your... they do wow yeah yeah not yeah. that many but <laughs> they do what do you get like a thumbs up like a there's likes a little, little heart yeah, yeah, yeah. Little heart. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I'm become, become addicted to the Right Move app for, <laughs> for house hunting. Right so cool. Yeah. <laughs> First world problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I, we settled on that one. Yeah, I think, yeah uh, we smashed I, everything out of social media there. I agree. There cool. we are. No, I agree. Three for three. So you are you are righteous in your hate. Yes. Woo! Who's All next? Right. Do you want to go next? Do you want to go next? Yeah, let's go. Right. Okay. okay. So Bring mine it. takes a little bit of explanation. Oh. But uh, I'm going to start with a title, and the title is Crinklers. Oh God! Right, I knew so, this was coming, and I forgot. So John maybe knows a little bit about crinklers. You don't know about no. crinklers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, not yet. I'm anyway. gonna set the scene here. So there is a community of people in this world mm. uh, who refer to themselves as furries. I'm sure you've heard of. Furries. I yeah, yeah, I do know what, who they are. So for those who don't know what a furry is, that is someone who believes, or maybe not believes necessarily, but has what they refer to as a fursona which is an alternate persona of, of them, a, a sort of different facet of them, maybe. Um, maybe they are slightly socially awkward. And as a result, they uh, become more confident and oh, outgoing. I you going to say more animal than man. More, more animal. <laughs> <laughs> when they are inhabiting their fursona. And in order to do so, they make or buy a fursuit, which is a full body furry suit. Yeah. Like complete with paws, legs, you know, little paws on their feet and everything so that they end up looking like an anthropomorphized, say, fox or wolf or bear or dog or something. It can be any animal at all. Furry is, is they don't restrict on what animal it is, right? And it's complete with head as well. So this full head goes over their head and they end up being what looks like a very large sort of um, American football mascot or ice hockey hmm. mascot. That's, that's what they end up looking like. That's actually probably like the best explanation I've, I've heard. The problem yeah. with people like this... <laughs> And I'm the way I see it. The way I see it is kick a sweeping generalization. <laughs> Surely people who are that socially awkward yeah. and, and probably don't get out of the house a lot. Let's assume, let's assume that's the case. At least How do they afford them. these things? I know, because they're expensive. They look because football mascot outfits, for example, are expensive. Mm. They're like How thousands. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well um, here comes the big here comes the big reveal. Here's my love of the <laughs> I, how do they afford it? thousands? How do they? Well, there's a do massive that? DIY community for making your own furry suit. Mm. So there's loads of tutorials on YouTube. I've dipped my toe in this world, and it's terrifying um, in its complexity and depth. But um, yeah, there's all sorts of tutorials how to make how to make eyes for your fur suit, how yeah. to make convincing paws for your hands. Whereas, like, if I killed and skinned an animal mm. and wore it to a convention, they'd look at me look at me like I was mad. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Which is weird. But, but that would shame, probably like, be cheaper. King shame, right? would, shame, that yeah. would probably be cheaper. It mm. would be cheaper. Doing it that way. Probably harder. More economical. So, but the, anyway. The focus here is not... But the no, focus yeah, here sorry, is not I'll, just yeah. furries. Like, like, people can have their, their, their issues with furries, and I understand that. Like, yes. they're very sweaty people. They're also, like, we see them a lot at conventions. You'd be, you'd be in a suit, wouldn't you? Uh, exactly. Sweaty. And they're hard to interact with because they come up to your table, uh, let's say, at a convention. It's the main place we tend yeah. to see them. And, like, <laughs> you don't know where they're looking, and they sort of act in this really weird, like, sort of cutesy, kawaii sort of way. And I'm just sort of like, I don't know how to talk to you. No. We've had several occasions where they refuse to break character and won't. The, yeah. Just, and don't even really talk. No, I don't think English. I'd be able to avoid either punching them in the face <laughs> or kicking them in the shins. <laughs> One of them. Well, the shins would be less protected than the face. The face would probably be a, yeah, a structure true, of polystyrene. Plus, you can, so you can do it more slyly if kicking the shins. Yeah, you can, no one would you, know you what. You can lose a hand as well. I mean, you don't know what's in that mouth. Yeah, big, that's true. Big old, big old Could mouth. Could be anything. Anyway, there's a Chainsaw. subsection of this community who are referred to as crinklers. I think it's a There's a of... subsection of that community. I know, right, exactly. It's like, it's like a Venn diagram. It's a horrible, horrible like Venn diagram. It's a spir- spiral in Now, I don't know who calls them crinklers. I don't know whether they call themselves crinklers or other members of the furry community look in on the crinklers and call them crinklers. But the reason mm. they're called crinklers mm. is because they wear nappies so that... that... Sorry, diapers for our international listeners. Adult, adult diapers, adult nappies, right? So that, because getting out of your furry suit to go to the toilet, that's a big job, right? <gasps> so why oh. not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, suddenly, I just what suddenly you mean. a ray of sunlight pours <laughs> onto Chris. <laughs> just realised. I thought no, I thought the nappy were going as baby animals. No, oh. no, it's on the inside so that they can just oh. do their business and carry on. That's much worse in their persona. <laughs> and the reason they're called crinklers is because they make a little crinkly sound. Because if you ever listen to a baby wearing a nappy and he walks around, he's got that sort of crinkly noise, right? And so if you if you see a furry who's got a nappy on, you can listen and you can hear that crinkling sound and say so they're a crinkler. That's horrendous. I hate this. I absolutely hate this. This is horrible. That is horrendous. It gets worse. <laughs> oh, God. Um, mildly worse because in America there was a convention specifically for furries, right? And it was very hilariously named Rain Furist, as in furry inside the word rainforest. See, I thought fursona was shit, but that's yeah. even worse. This is bad, yeah. This was held at a hotel. And all these furries got together, all in their fursuits. And there was all sorts of little events. There were some stores to buy things. There was like a costume parade where they showed off the best fursuits. There was even a dance competition, I believe, where they were dancing in their fursuits. Any opportunity to remain purely, fully in your fursona character so that you didn't have to... So you could escape, you know, your social awkwardness. Yes, Chris. I have a question. Yes, hit me up. When babies poo in their nappies, they change them. Almost immediately, yeah. You, you don't... What do these individuals do? <sighs> well, if it were easy to get into the suit for cleaning purposes, surely we wouldn't need to be wearing... Are we saying that these people, in their furry animal costumes, that their mum's probably bought for them, walk around in their own feces for most of the day? I think we're saying that. I think we can't escape that possibility. That's worse than a baby. I think it's important to mention a baby at, this point. at least cries to let the parents know it's done its business, <laughs> and then the parents change the nappy. A baby would look at them and go, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> <laughs> it's important to mention that, that these people are over the age of like seventeen. Usually, they're sort of they, they're they're high teens to low twenties. You see, what's interesting though, uh, sorry, horrific is um, that we we were watching some footage, like a little mini documentary about Rain Furrist. And yeah, this is how I found out about Crinklers. Because they were banned from, like, the Hilton and all... Hilton. <laughs> the Hilton? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's at the Hilton. But it's like, there was... <laughs> That's where it was. That's unbelievable. <laughs> there was footage of people walking around. And it's not... And, yes, Crinkler, you know, wear it under the suit, whatever. It's your little secret. Yeah. But they were, like, grown... Your little brown secret. They were adults <laughs> walking around wearing, like, a leather vest. Like, a leather kind of, like, dog mask. And then just oh. the the diaper. Just the diaper, yeah. The nappy. So that, that was fully out there. You know what I mean? I'm one of if the... you are one of these people, by the way, I'm terribly sorry, but you need to make better life decisions. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, honestly, I, I, you message me, I will tell you what you should do with your life. Full appointed list. Guru, Guru Ray will sort it this out. Is, you. This, you can tell I'm very passionate about this, even though I've just heard what these people are. I think it's, it's annoying to know it, it exists. It's like your, your life will ever, I can't, forever be... I can't believe... I, could, I, could... I can't believe they walk around in nappies that they've defiled i, I could almost deal with furries i mean all, i like yeah no i mean 
to the extent that it's like, yeah, you do do what makes you happy. You know, like... (laughs) <laughs> do what you like it's your your jazz but I think the crinkler is a, is a, is a, a brown step too far mm. uh, I, I also I think there's within the crinkler community <laughs> I would suppose there's probably a, <laughs> one of the smellier communities <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying like if you're in that community you're there either because of necessity yes or you're there by choice you know what I mean like there's some people for whom I'm sure there is an appeal. Either way, if you've got to a point in your life as an adult, yeah. when you walk around in a furry costume and you think, ah, oh, yeah, it's really inconvenient getting out of this furry costume. I should wear a nappy. <laughs> and I then guess, the, the, that's, yeah. the, that's the less bad one. The other one is, oh, yeah, I think I want to wear a nappy. I, I want to. like, yeah. I want to wear a nappy. Not because logistically it presents a challenge otherwise. But because, hey, I want to be part of that community. Like, I, I want to be a crinkler. I just want to belong. I want imagine, to wear a badge. Imagine being so sad that you wanted to be one of these people. I love how you're resisting using the word crinkler as well. Like, I don't think I've heard you say it yet. I refuse to acknowledge its existence <laughs> as you know, a it's word. Weird. When you when you told me about this, yeah, uh, it's like, you know, you get a sinking feeling sometimes. When it's like, yeah. hey, John, like, do you know what a crinkler is? <laughs> and it's just not a good word. <laughs> you just know it's going bad. I'll be honest with you. I thought you were going to talk about crisps. Really? When you say crinkler. I'm oh sorry. God, I'm a, so sorry. Dis- the disappointment makes it so much yeah. worse yeah. as well. I mean, crisps are great. One of the problems with Rain Furesque was that in addition to trashing the hotel, like they, they, they were... were out of, I mean, using the word animals is perfect because they were out of control. Yeah. Was like, it seriously at the Hilton? Yeah. In America. That's in bonkers. America, yeah. That's Seattle bonkers. bonkers. Yeah. But they tore it apart and people, members of the public, rightly complained when used... Filled. Adult... For God's sake! Were found scattered around, strewn around the car park on on car windows. That's horrific. Like in the hotel, uh, toilets were blocked with them. That's there a, must have been that's enough horrific. crinklers there to, to to make an impact and break the hotel, which is essentially what happened. That that's horrendous. While while I will never be able to fully comprehend the the life choices here. Um, there's almost a part of me which admires the chutzpah. Uh, chutzpah again. <laughs> uh, double of, chutzpah. It's yeah. like, okay, guys, we've made a decision. We're going to appear in public, have a convention entirely devoted to our loves and crinkles, and it's we're just going to we're just going to raise the roof. Like we're just going to go burn all out. this place down because yeah, this is our year. How could we ever reach this height again? No morons. I, think... I don't admire any any aspect of them. No, I think. Yeah, I think Chris might be right there. Like, I, I don't. I don't know whether morons we can give them anything. I just ex- mm, crinklers. Could you not have come up with a happier word for it? Make a happy little sound when they crinkle. Um, what other noises does nappy make? Um, squelches. Squelches. Oh. That's, that's only there. after the. Uh, that's that's after the, the offending busy, yeah. splatoon. Well, can I uh, just to. Change the subject. Can, can I can I come to my hate? Yeah, please no, do. Please, because I, I think we settled on that one. A little <laughs> sick inside, we'll agree. <laughs> the uh, my hate is the uh, how to word it the deceptive faces of people in Tesco's adverts. <laughs> bear bear with me. Okay. Now there's a story here. Go on. Uh, Tesco's, which is a leading supermarket chain. Yeah, other supermarkets leading, are available. Uh, other, other bleeding. Yeah, not brands, sponsored. Hashtag yeah. not spawn. Um, are <laughs> That's how's the price. <laughs> They've been running a advertising campaign. For oh, a while. they have. And maybe you two are familiar with it. It's basically a load of posters of heavy air quotations, normal members of the public. Oh. Posing, kind of smiling with a dish they've cooked. Oh, They're sort yeah. of famous for them, isn't yes. it? It's Presume... the Tesco's food stories, I believe it's called. Bravo. Yeah. Where my advertising. No, I don't think I have yeah. seen these actually. Well, the gimmick is uh, it's like, here's Dave. And it's oh. like, he, so here's Dave, and he's holding a delicious little casserole dish. Oh. You know, nice Did little, he cook it himself? Well, that's what we're led to believe. Okay. And he's smiling, he's in his kitchen at home, and it'll be, Dave's just got back from work on Friday, ready for the weekend casserole, or something like that. It'll have some colloquial, okay. everyday name. Yeah, I understand. Or, because De- it's what Dave's famous for making. Deborah's, you know, ice I'm cream sorry, in bed. I kicked the cat. Sunday kind of thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I left the kids at the gym. Yeah, and that sort of thing. Pick up and at, Johnny from football. And at first, I was like, okay, you know, that's actually. I didn't mind it. I was like, it was a fairly clever advertising campaign. It's heartfelt, John. Yeah, it's got a, and got I, a homegrown and I, feel. I, I built a whole narrative in my head where I was like, I imagine that Tesco's ran a campaign 
uh, and then people wrote into the website. Oh, that's very naive. Uh, very oh, naive. Yeah. And they dropped him a little email and they said, "Hi, I'm Dave, and uh, when I get back, <laughs> when I get back from work, there's nothing I enjoy more than cooking a casserole using your delicious products." And they go. And, and the marketing execs are like, this Dave, this is hot. He gets yeah, it. This is, a, this you is know, gold. This is, a, this is a good lead. So, so, I, so I imagine they shortlisted the best entries. Oh, no. Brought them in <laughs> and said, okay, Dave, you know, we've here's, here's your dish. You know, just smile with it. You mm. get to be on a poster. Click. Oh, and, and, and then I get a little moment of joy in my heart where I walk into a supermarket. I'm like, oh, look at him. That's great. That's you know, Dave. normal people cooking stuff. And then there's like a shelf and it says, make your own Dave's casserole thing. You call it John's. And they were, but the thing is, they were they were playing it really smart for a while because they all seemed very normal. Are you sure. Yeah, they seemed like normal people. They like, weren't crinklers. No. no. Yeah. So like Mike like Mike <laughs> likes fajitas, or one was like it was like Dag's uh, super pizza, you know, stuff like that, and like a mm. couple of beaming kids. I'm like, it's great. Dennis's Pampers. <laughs> Stop. Filled. Filled pamper still. casserole. Dennis's filled Pampers. <laughs> Crinkler casserole. <laughs> Jeff's crying in the bathroom. <laughs> what have I done to the Hilton? Headless furry suit. <laughs> Headless <laughs> Regret banana split. I don't know. <laughs> but it's like, you know. But then they overplayed their hand and the photos. Of, oh, yeah. Of pic- pictures, started becoming more beautiful. More beautiful. And also more like, how can we tell a whole story with someone's face? <laughs> and the one that tipped me over the edge was, was <laughs> walking in. And it's like, I don't know, Daniel's... So sorry, morning yes. fajitas. Yes, I and, knew you were going to yeah. say this. And it's like some some Jack the Lad going like, hmm. Uh, wah, wah. Sorry, do you know the story sorry, behind Dave. that one? Because there's a radio advert to support that exact oh, poster, and I've heard the radio advert. Really? Yes, I heard it the other day because we had the radio on at work in the studio, and it's it's what would you say, Justin or whatever his name? Yeah, is. Justin. He's yeah. just some lad, and he's like the, the ad just starts, just goes, "Hello, I'm Justin." I had a party over the weekend while my parents were away on holiday, but it got a little... Parents? He's 37! <laughs> I think he's meant to be like 16 or something. Such These are the kind of people who buy animal costumes for their kids! <laughs> this is how it begins. This is how it starts. And he's like, not only did too many people show up to the party... They were my... crinkless. <laughs> yeah. And they trashed my toilet! <laughs> but my parents They trashed back. my room at the Hilton. <laughs> Justin, sorry we shat in the cistern. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's like... And Don't then, get a vaters. <laughs> You're apologising for that. Not only that, but my parents came back a day early and the house was trash. Oh, it was like a poor print of feces on the bed. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it was a nightmare. And so then the, the ad just goes on to say, so, you know, feeling pretty guilty, the next morning I decided to cook them my, I'm sorry, uh, avocado and bacon muffin platter or whatever it is that he, oh, he has. So delicious. And then at the end, the little jingle, do, 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 sort of happy tune plays and Tesco every little helps. This makes me there. feel more sick than the crinklers, I feel. I hate... Those radio voices. I hate kind of like... I bet the voice on the radio wasn't even the same actor. Oh, no, almost definitely, no. But I'm... Just you know, I, I don't want to blow your minds, but I'm starting to suspect there was never a Justin. Oh, no, 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 there isn't. No. No, no, this is all jumped up. I, by, I, I think you should blame your own naivety for this, I just job. want to believe the best in people, especially I, Tesco's... I work for a creative advertising I agency. I bet Dave's never even cooks a <gasps> I know. I work for the dark side, right? And, okay. and I, I know exactly what the process would have been to go about this. And it would have been an agency would have come up with the hotline... Tesco's food stories. Okay. And then they would have come up with a list of Marianne's, I left the gas on and the apartment exploded. What, the kitchen's uh, on fire? <laughs> <laughs> marshmallows. Yeah, marshmallows. Um, I uh, put a Deborah's... metal bowl in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's, sorry I forgot the ink ceiling. Uh... <laughs> Chocolate. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to give you my kidney um, uh, heaters. <laughs> Cindy, sorry I thought the safety was on. <laughs> Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> oh, man. Um, 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 yeah, Craig's, sorry my dad shat in your Wellington food. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they get us on this marketing Tacos. campaign? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Podcast overboard. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Frank's I'm sure that'll come right <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah bolognese Erica's how'd you get blood stains out of a rug <laughs> um, cocktail Robert's it was like that when I got here <laughs> tuna sandwich <laughs> oh oh um, yeah. yeah so that's my hate I hate that they could have got away with it too if they hadn't gone if that 
gurning prick. <laughs> <laughs> His face. I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, John. I'm veering on love for this. It's giving us a bloody good laugh. Yeah, we had a great time. I just. I, don't I know. think maybe your hate is more the the fake. Well, you said fake sincerity, didn't you? Yeah. At the beginning of this, but almost the fake sincerity of all homegrown ad campaigns. It's like it's like the whole direction that McDonald's has gone with trying to make everything look more wholesome. Mm, and so all the yeah. music is like u- ukulele, and all their colours have gone to greens and beiges and stuff. Even though they're still selling the same products that they always did before. But it's like the instant you put like uh, an ear of corn swaying in the wind in your advert, suddenly everyone's like, oh, it must be good for you. I just hate, I hate adverts where they're trying to convey so much yeah. with just a look or a facial expression. <laughs> you know, it will be like a billboard and, you know, there's like a woman in a coffee shop and she's looking at the bill and she's like pondering and behind her. There's like, I don't know, some visual metaphor of the economy plummeting. <laughs> and it must be like, and you're like, hard times, you know, try out Tesco's yeah. <laughs> austerity pizza and stuff like that. I, I, I don't know. Switzerland. There's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of actors and actresses I fully appreciate. They're trying to get work where they can, but I would just, I, I cannot stand that. I'm like, tell us, just tell us to buy the pizza. Don't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> False sincerity. We're going to buy it anyway. Justin, look, I've already got it. How did that happen? You yeah. Know? Exactly. It's already in my hand. Like when you open Twitter. Yeah. I walk around, I walk around Tesco and just gnashing my teeth saying, I don't, mm. I don't think Justin's real. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you walk around the corner in Tesco and there was Justin, but it turns out his name wasn't Justin and you got chatting to him. Oh my God. And it turned out he was like, you know, just an actor. I'm like, oh, that would wow. be awful, wouldn't it? So, so do you actually? So, do you, do you like pizza? So, no, yeah, not... but he doesn't even like pizza. Yeah, yeah, actors, actors don't eat carbs. <laughs> you, you think I? Got this like, by accident. <laughs> I got like this. He's walking around topless, like yeah. oil. <laughs> so, so, is that the thing? Are you actually rejecting my my hate because of the joy? It no, I agree. Me? I hate it. I'm. I, no, I'm more rejecting it because of your naivety. I just want to believe. <laughs> I just, want to, I just want the best in people. I'm rejecting it on, on your naivety and the fact that it gave me a bloody good laugh. I feel like John's learned a powerful lesson today. Yeah. Like he, no, well, not today. We, bo- we, we both work in marketing, so yeah. we probably knew this already. <laughs> oh, sweet child. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, come close. Come into the bosom of hatred. <laughs> I'll tell you what, should we, uh, speaking of which, of the bosom of hatred, oh, uh, yeah. should we go to our favourite section, the bosom of hatred? Uh, <laughs> should we see what... Uh, should we get a jingle for that? Or? Uh, do, 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 do. No, that's great, chill. <laughs> see, what, <laughs> see what Twitter's got to say on the matter. Yeah, I've got some hates from some from some tweets. Okay, well, why, why don't you uh, give give us a hate? Give us a hate. Um, okay, I've got a, a hate here from Tina. Okay, who on Twitter is at Tina the wife. Hey Tina. And, uh, hey Tina, and she says two identical bras, one fits, the other doesn't. Oh, nightmare, oh. absolute oh. nightmare. Oh. Oh. Preached to the pre- choir, yeah. sister. Yeah. Testify on yeah, Genius. on it. Like we yeah, we know it. That um, is weird though. That's a general inconsistency with clothing, really. I've, I've heard this said before. Run that by me again. They're identical. Two identical bras. From the same shop. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. So same range, same size, everything. But one bra is like two cups. Uh, like two two bras equal one brassiere. Yeah. One yeah. bra is a pair of cups. It's like a pair of trousers. Yes. Yeah. So she's saying that like the cups are different. I don't think she's saying she's one saying. cup fits the other doesn't. I don't think she's saying that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy them separately. You have to buy them separately and click, <laughs> click them together. <laughs> well, look. It's like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> Like a sort of modular system. It's like, yeah. like <laughs> Chris has just died. Oh, no. it's, like, it's like a pair of trousers. You know, you don't buy a single trowel. No, you don't. No, no. I mean, maybe we could if you had one leg shorter oh, than the other. Oh, dear. Okay. From what I understand she's saying, it's that one, one whole Maybe we were the wrong person to people to come to with this. <laughs> no, no, I think, no, I, fine, I, yeah. I think we're very knowledgeable. It's um, great. One fits, what the other doesn't. I mean, that would be annoying. You know, no, I, that would I, be annoying with any item of clothing. I've bought clothes before and thought mm. that's... I love this item of clothing. I'm going to go back and buy another one of those. And I've been very happy to find that it fits exactly the same as the one before. If it didn't, I would be outraged. That's then a strong word. Yes, yeah. yes. I'd be annoyed. You're a, you're a man of fashion. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever been grossly. Um, yes, uh, many dis- times. Many times. With the... Well, I, I wear a 32 waist and a 30 leg. My. So my legs are shorter than my waist, whatever oh, that wow. means. Yeah. So yeah. that's quite a weird trouser size. That is a specific um, scenario. So I get them online sometimes. Through uh, specialists, <laughs> Stocky Gent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where's the rest Jack-a-mon. of Where's the rest of you? Dot org. <laughs> Can we just talk about Giacomo for a minute? Yeah, yeah, Giacomo. Tell okay. me, tell me, tell me true. When Giacomo first came out, mm. wasn't Johnny Vegas for voice of Giacomo? And it was, uh, it was all, yeah, he was. If it yeah. wasn't him, it was someone who no, and, and it was like he a was. comedy brand because it was like yeah. it's clothing for the huskier gentleman, and it was like yeah. And the catchphrase was, I kid you not. 
Giacomo, don't make me run. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was. was. And it was, all, it was like, oh, it was, Giacomo originally was marketed at big fat slobs, let's be honest. But yeah, but it was and like, now it's like tall blokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, they're not necessarily fat, they're but just you're, tall. But you're both marketing experts. I mean, do you think they shot themselves from the foot by <laughs> insulting their target base? Where it was like. No, uh, I don't. I, no, think people, like, I think blokes probably associate with things like that. Yeah, or, I think certainly a certain kind of bloke, that, of which there are many, I would argue. Probably would be like, oh, that's a right laugh. Yeah, I'll buy some Giacomo shirts. But that's the thing. It was like, hey, cheeky, cheeky, chunky chaps. They can have clothes as well. But now it's yeah. serious, isn't it? They're like... Now it's like, you know, H&M or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's another one here from Imogen. Hate. Another hate. She says, I hate it when you buy sausages and they're all still joined together. Yeah, it does. Bother. No one wants that. That's why, like, that's why God intended. I know why that is, but it does annoy me. Mm. Yeah. You can buy sausages that are separated, though. I try not to you think. Can. You pay extra. <laughs> yeah. I try not to think too much about sausages. Actually. I know, because when they're connected, and then you start chopping that, and it starts tearing, or <clears> where <throat> everything starts to go wrong, you start to become intimately aware of the anatomy of the sausage. Yeah. And no one wants that. No no one wants that. Yeah. Do you see a have... trotter poke out or something? <laughs> An eyeball, hoof and leather and <laughs> Chinese newspapers. <laughs> a bit of a nappy. If uh, uh, life hack, if you buy uh, gluten-free sausages, mm. got more meat in them. Is that right? Because all they've done is take away the. Oh yeah, because they the pack filler. it with like filler yeah. and the other way. Ah. Sawdust and. Are they more expensive then? I guess they must be. I guess they might be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They probably are. Um. Still, that's interesting. Can we respect that? Like I respect it. I think. Yeah, I, I, it bothers me. I don't like particularly. I mean, I can you get some up. good scissors and you can cut them. And it's fine. But like, if you haven't got scissors to hand, you start using a knife and it all starts to go to heck. Yeah. In a hand basket. Wasn't there a big? Um, you know, they used to say you should prick for sausages uh. and let the uh, <laughs> <laughs> and let the juices escape. And, and yeah. now, no, you should do that because they otherwise they explode in the but, oven. Ah, but now they're saying not to do that. Yeah, but you see, I haven't done that. No, years. I do. I do that. You still do it. I do that. I don't do it anymore. But they just go. They go. They split, don't they? Because the case is very. But what I heard thin. is, if you prick them, then all the tasty juices seep out. Yeah, I've not had a sausage in a while, actually. Not a meat sausage. No, it's not to like get a bit kind of dis- untrusting. I had a sausage yesterday. Oh, was it was good. How was it? Actually, no. It's all right. I ate it in a sandwich. Oh, tell me more. No, that, that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. That's the end of the story. Do you have any hates? From I do have some hates, actually. Um, I like uh, Dudley's here, which is uh, rough abroad. Um, too many people being idiots. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Uh, Did we have one last time, which was like people being jerks? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool, okay. Similar, There's a difference between an idiot and a jerk, though. There is, that's Similar true. Theme. Someone, Although, somebody I know thought that the Tesco campaign was real people. Really? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> oh, what idiot! Some, one of my mates. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh, unbel- oh. I, uh, I heard uh, that chap just, just had so much love and, <laughs> and boyish... <laughs> Boyish hope. I didn't hear any heart. of that. Yeah. No, I only heard the stupid bit. Although I do like Dudley's phrasing that apparently like a certain threshold of idiots would be fine, but too many idiots is mm. Oh, I see what he's yeah, now now you see this is actually this is this is important because it's like it's kinda of like why we've got Trump, isn't it? That's too many idiots. I mean yeah, we don't uh, have Trump. Break, break that down. Okay, yeah. so the reason Trump was elected. Yes. You would oh, you would think right. that someone so obviously an idiot. Obviously, he has his supporters who are maybe also idiots. Maybe they're not idiots, but some of them, I think, are. I think the problem with I think the problem with the whole Trump thing is like even if the big defense is like I'm not an idiot, I'm not a racist, I voted for Trump because of decent reasons. Well, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but the thing is, he's an idiot. Yeah, like even if you're not an idiot, and I accept that. Trump is clearly an idiot. I think if you're a very smart person who voted for an idiot, I think that that's think yeah, a few pegs down. Maybe Trump actually got lower, fewer votes than any of the previous two. Uh, Republican mm. candidates. Oh right, okay. Um, in terms of actual numbers, it's just that Hillary got less, much, much less overall than Obama. Oh. Much, much less. So it's more. It, oh, it's not so much an abundance of idiots. Maybe it's a lack of sensibility. Maybe but we, certainly, if there were fewer idiots, he probably wouldn't have got in. Probably. Maybe, yes. maybe we all get our time in the sun, and this is just we're just going to. Maybe he's season. had too much time in the sun, and that's why he's already. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a sun. Looks like a purse. Shall I do? Um, <laughs> Should I do a bit of a, a kind of rapid fire of hates? Yeah, we'll just go okay. yes or no. Okay, Coffee Revels yeah. from Andrew. Yeah. yeah, I don't like them. Okay, when trailers give away the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, uh, call centres. Um, the actual call... I mean, I don't like the calls they make, but the call centres themselves I have any strong feelings about. I mean... Yes, I, yeah, I don't like getting calls generally, even from people I know. Well, this one, uh, how about this one? This one uh, is really going to work in an audio format. But Matt says, I have a serious hate at the moment. There is an ongoing and increasing habit for people to put spaces between the end of a sentence and an exclamation mark. Space 
exclamation mark. Oh, he does it. Yeah, does he? He does yeah. It there, yeah. Oh, powerful move. Yeah, I hate that. Why? Yeah. That actually Why really that? bothers me when I see that. When I was the, exclamation, more than, the exclamation mark is the punctuation. More yeah. than spelling mistakes, that annoys me. Really? Yeah. It's I'm, like putting a full stop after space. Why why would you do that? I use as a child I used to do that. I used to think oh, that's What how was I your was. thinking? What was the reason? I don't know. I just assumed no. it's such a nice little proud little dot in these. <laughs> needs needs its space. Needs all the attention. Okay, how about this from Alex? Uh the, simply this phrase. Next year, James Corden is Peter Rabbit. Ooh. No. Is that no. true? It is true. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. and Probably ooh. a voice, though, rather than actual mo- it, it mocap. Is, it is Everyone voice. else is CGI. They dipped him in butter, and yeah. then in the, they rolled him around the bottom of a barber shop and just. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually quite like James Corden. Okay, okay, that's fine. I don't mind James Corden, like as a human being, and and certainly as an actor when he's just doing his thing. Yes, like, like for example, he was in what was that show? <laughs> Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey. Well, that, that's that really where... so much. You know, you he... see, like I quite liked him in that. Yeah, you know, and I quite like him when he's like just a character in a cast of characters and he's a slightly funny man that's fine i think this increasing desire for him to be the the lead man the spotlight and, and that's certainly what he is in peter rabbit the, the I don't interesting know that works well we watched the peter rabbit trailer yeah and the very odd thing about that he's a bit he's a bit of a cheeky he's chappy jack the lad because really... like, i've watched like the peter rabbit cartoon as a kid when i was young and it's so 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 quaint like yeah. it's super kind of like it's like gentle. yeah like wiltshire cottage on the front of a chocolate box yeah. sort of content i have not about. seen the trailer actually i didn't know there was one well he's like he's like a he's a little bit kind of like way a little bit woo he's, he talks like he's he talks like a jack, wide boy jack the lad, yeah. he's like the english country ruffian you know okay like, i'll give it a watch but yeah maybe he doesn't fit that role particularly well it's if very, that's the point. It seems like a bold made. reimagining. I like James Corden as a as an individual, though. As a human being. Would you like a little story before we move on to love? Go on. Okay. This comes from friend of the show, Liz. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sit. Get comfy. Okay. Oh, okay. Settle down. I hate people who do not use common sense when they are parking their cars. Mm. The existence mm. of double yellow lines is something that I believe should not be necessary. Come on, people. You don't need a line to tell you that it is not appropriate to park opposite <laughs> or at the entrance to a junction or on a narrow road where there is a heavy stream of traffic in both directions. Yes. Mm. However, we do live in a world that has these safety measures, which is why it infuriates me even more when idiots, idiots. decide that it will be okay to block up rush hour traffic by parking on double yellows outside the corner shop purely because they need this morning's paper. It is completely inconsiderate. I don't like these people and I have to deal with them twice a day on my commute to work. Those of your listeners who know the area in which I work, which I am not filling in for, you know, anonymity on a podcast. Because they will seek her out. Will have experienced the terrible abandonment of cars generally throughout. But unless you travel in rush hour, they know nothing of the damn right stupidity which the locals display. Oh, wow. Wow, wow that was that, excellent. That, wow. Is a, that is a lot of words. Yeah, I think little, we should get her on. A little round of applause there for, for Liz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Liz. I, uh, when I lived in Salisbury, I used to have this road that was necessary for my commute home. And it was like double yellows up both sides all the way because mm. it was really quite thin. Two lanes of traffic, one going the other way to the other. And there was a corner shop, uh, sort of a quarter of the way up the road. No, no other roads off of it. And there would always be a car parked just outside the corner shop because they, they couldn't be bothered to do any sort of walking. There's a car park at the bottom of this road, by the way. They could have walked two minutes and they'd be there. But instead they parked outside. They didn't go up on the curb or anything because obviously that would be even worse. So they just completely blocked this lane of traffic. Completely. Mm. Put their hazards Stand on. Backs. Hazards. Put their hazards on. That makes it okay, right? Popped in. To get their whatever paper, Mars bar, you know, crinkles, whatever they need, pack of crinkles. <laughs> Delicious crinkles. <laughs> and it was just so annoying because it was like it was the, it, the the hazards were like the most annoying part of it. It was almost like I know what I'm doing is yeah. wrong, but if I put the hazards on, then like, everyone understands. Yeah, you know, hazards. It's like without the hazards, the car was completely invisible, <laughs> and I I just would have walked. But then they know it. what they know what they've done, don't they? That's the point. That when is... they put the hazards on, oh, I'll put the hazards on. Well, maybe it is an emergency. But there was this colossal I mean, queue behind them because the oncoming traffic was so con- constant. You couldn't overtake them. They would just stop the road completely. It was so annoying. I'm trying to think of a situation. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm fully in agreement with Liz. I'm merely trying to think of a scenario. Like an example annoy for you. Us. Well, when we used to live together, uh, my good friend Chris. Oh, yes. Just yes. two of my eyes. No, I, rem- I remember, now. yes. Um, we used- parking used to be a real issue. Uh, well. Oh, my. Here we go. Here we go. Right, go. you've got me now. Okay. Okay. There, there are two visitor spots. By that old house. He's pointing to it. He's pointing. I'm pointing to it because it's round the corner. Yeah. And the guy who didn't live on that street used to park his car in one of the visitor spots and then go in his back permanently back fence to the point Ugh, to the garden. point where we we it took us like a, a year to realise it was actually a visitor parking space and anyone could have had it because it just you're just perpetually in it. 
And then they had a house party one time, and yeah. they parked in our parking space. Yeah, I just just uh, had an extra extra car. So eventually, I work out whose it is. Go knock on the door. I say, "Excuse me, you're in our space." And he goes, "Oh, I didn't think it'd be a problem." What do you, what do you mean? Well, based on what? What do you mean? What, you're killing me. The way that you find out whether or not it's a problem or not is by asking. That's yeah. the only way you could ever know. Assuming that you don't think it'd be a problem just makes you an idiot. We found a lot of fun things in our parking space, including that car that was oh, stolen. Oh yes, that the one car time. that someone had stolen and left in one of our parking spots, <gasps> and then you shuffled through without wearing gloves. Yes, so well, your prints were all over it. <laughs> well, it was more the uh, urine and feces I left yeah. on the scene, which that was, was a weird yeah. day. Yeah, because me and Snowy were drunk, <laughs> really, like really drunk. Yeah, into my words. <laughs> so we, we called the police, and it was like, don't, just don't act, let them know you're drunk. Act sober. <laughs> And yeah, I, I think we pulled it off. Good day, officer. I'm sober. Where are your trousers? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. But I, I was being a detective, you see, because the car yes, had two a, fl- a terrible one. Two yes. flat tires, and uh, there were a load of like letters on the back page. There were, yeah. Back page, back seat, back seat. Not so I was able to look page. at them and go, oh, I know, I know where this car should have come from. Mm. Anyway, should we move on to love? Go yes, on. Let's then. move on to go love. on then. Uh, who wants to start us with love? Shall I go? I no, please, please do. Let's do the same pattern. Bring, bring it on. Yeah. I like the smell of petrol stations. Hey guys, John here. Sorry to interrupt the flow of the show, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, We certainly had a good time, as you can hear from our slightly raucous laughter, which hopefully hasn't blown your eardrums. Um, Just wanted to, um, yeah, step in with a bit of housekeeping. So, episode two, we're back. Um, It's almost habit forming, we'll see if we can make the uh, difficult third episode happen. Uh, We hope you're enjoying the show, maybe you're a fan of Big Punch Studios, maybe you've only just discovered us. Either way, uh, we do all manner of stuff. We make comics, we make games, we make podcasts, and you can find it all on our website, which is www.bigpunchstudios.com. And in terms of a show called Hate uh, in particular, uh, if you are enjoying what we're doing, if you are enjoying this little uh, exploration into Hate, uh, we would absolutely love it if you could give us a little review on iTunes, because, hey, I mean, I know not everyone uses iTunes, but at the same time, uh, it is kind of like the number one podcasty kind of chart out there, and if you're a new show trying to make a bit of an impact and reach new people, yeah, it, mean, it, it makes a hell of a lot of difference if um, we get some ratings and reviews, so yeah, you can make them as funny as you like, you can make them as serious or as daft, doesn't really matter, but it really would mean the world to us. Um, same goes for... I don't know, sharing, just tell your friends. If you if you feel particularly hate-filled, hate-filled and you'd like to kind of pass on that, you know, terrible emotion to uh, those you love, then yes, please uh, point them in our direction. Uh, any attention really, do means, uh, really does, he said, tripping over his words, really does mean the world. Um, so yeah, uh, as we've mentioned in the podcast itself, you can join in the conversation at home on Twitter using the hashtags show called hate and show called love, respectively, to send us your hates and loves. Uh, we also now have a Twitter account, uh, which is uh, a show called Hate. Um, you know, it's all in the name. Um, and finally, I would say that if you enjoy the show, if you enjoy what we do with Big Punch Studios in general, and would like to help us make more free content like this, um, we do have a Patreon, which is www.patreon.com forward slash Big Punch Studios. Oh, 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 and uh, I forgot there is another way you can get in touch, which is to email us, which is a show called hate at bigpunchstudios.com. So, yeah, um, lots of information, lots of social media, lots of ways to get involved. But, yes, your mission for today, if you choose to accept it, is to head to iTunes and leave us uh, a review and a rating, if at all possible, because that really would make all the difference to us horrible, hate filled people. Hey, and maybe we'll give you a special shout out for doing that. So, Cheers, guys. Um, thank you for listening. I now hand you back over to your normal show. Um, <laughs> in the morning? Just generally. Is that oh, the smell I like of gasoline? It. Yes, I like the smell of petrol. Well, I, I like the smell. We all like the smell of petrol. It's a nice smell. I like I, I the, smell. the smell of petrol, yeah. But petrol... Sca- you mean in? I like, like f- it when I go to a petrol station, I can smell petrol. Oh, so it's not... You don't mean like... The same applies to when somebody mows the lawn. You don't... Oh, oh I see. So you... That you, smell. Oh. Yeah. You know the one I mean. I thought you meant like when you're walking... Not in the shop. When you're walking down and you've got like Zoo magazine and <laughs> yeah. like a pack of smell wine the magazines and some air freshener. No, the, G- the Ginsters or Ginsters. I mean, where do you mic- stand on that? I don't know where I stand on that, actually. You've got the free microwave. Yeah. Jinx I like so. I don't like the idea of a free communal microwave. I'm just going to say that. I once bought a kind of 
meaty kind of like pie thing from a service station. Didn't realise it needed microwaving. Oh no! And it was like, oh, oh no! Was Did it? you eat it? Escalator. Yeah, just, yeah. just powder. <laughs> it was horrible. It was so bad. I like. I do like the smell of petrol. I like. I, I think, think I do as well. Smell. Actually, yeah, I, yeah, I, I enjoy really like filling it. up my car. You're actually deprived not having a car because well, you don't get yeah, to, no, yes, you don't get to just huff as much petrol. When you said <laughs> when you said mowing the lawn, that really like you know that you yeah that something. smell with it. Yeah. When then someone's mowing the lawn, you can smell the fuel and the grass. Well, the thing is, I've got an electric. Oh. We, have, we have an electric lawn mower, so we don't, oh, get, we don't get that smell. That's a shame. Yeah. The um, uh, I remember seeing a thing about a guy. Who actually had an addiction to petrol? Really, he was like a, a homeless fellow. Oh, and there was footage of him on the garage forecourt, just like stumbling up in the middle of the night, taking, <laughs> taking the pump out and just kind of chugging it directly. Actually wow. drinking petrol. Actually drinking petrol. Oh, you yeah. can smell it. Isn't that like super? Surely that will just super strip your insides. I, I I don't think he was thinking it through really. No, no. I mean, no. You, did he light I'm, up a cigarette? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a fire eater. Boom. God, can you imagine? In America, they are they generally. I know it's a big place, but don't they have like? You can turn click, them on, and click and it walk into away. the car, like as if the act of holding it for <laughs> it's too a much, minute was yeah. too much. It is too much, John. Yeah, I, I find stressful. when I'm when I'm refueling my car, my hand starts to ache. I do okay. find that I change hands. People mm. tend to hang out more at four courts in America as well. Remember when we were in Canada, we were hanging out at the four court when we really? were all driving around shooting you and dice. Me. Yeah, and it was just like this is a laugh in it. Yeah, just hanging out. Laugh a minute. I'd got, never do it here. Got a bottle of Gatorade. Got you know <laughs> some beef jerky. Beef jerky. Yeah, <laughs> Twizzlers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are Twizzlers meat or sweets. I think they're like Are you those red, of Twinkies, red licorice kind of. Oh no! Spiral okay, yeah. Thing. Yeah. Because what are those like? Um, You're thinking meal you... time. You know, you'd have your turkey dinosaurs. You'd have your little potato. You faces. get turkey twiz. Turkey, turkey Twizzlers. Twizzlers. That's what I'm thinking. thinking. It's like a UK kind That's of a, yeah. brand. It's like a Jamie little Oliver spiral like of turkey. Them. You ever had a Tootsie Roll? No. Tootsie roll. I know what they are. I don't think I've ever They're had They're made one. by the same people. I've never been to Twinkies. America. They're definitely American. They were made, I think they came up with them during like, the Second World War as a substitute for chocolate. Oh. No, because, I haven't had So them. they could ship it out to like soldiers. Oh, yeah, because it lasted longer. Because it's not, it's brown. It looks, it looks a little bit like a poo. I'm not oh. going to lie. But it's brown. It's the texture. Something you'd find in a crinkler's nappy. It's the texture of. <laughs> Jesus. Is that the word? It's a texture of like a. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Like an opal <laughs> fruit, awful. like a Starburst. Oh, but oh, it's I chocolate know, yes. flavored. Oh, oh. So it's like it looks like chocolate. I was expecting a cake when you said chocolate. yeah, it's I was gummy. Actually, it's like yeah. a brown log, like a just of, oh, like a lump of yeah. whatever. Okay, yeah. No, so, I've never had one of those. So petrol, I like the smell of petrol. That's fair enough. To be fair, like I can understand it. Do you love it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Because I think I just like it. Honestly, I was struggling to come up with something that wasn't food. <laughs> it's your life <laughs> after last time. Yeah, yeah, no. It's, I've... Is your life enriched, it. though, by the knowledge that petrol is always there for you if you need it? Sure. Having a hard whatever, day. Whatever, whatever. A little, little huff of petrol. It stops me it. going on Facebook and being ambiguous. <laughs> I just go to the local petrol station. <laughs> Take a deep breath. He's back yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's him. So where's your car? Oh, it's around the corner. Yeah, right? you know, yeah. don't need any actual Parked on petrol. double yellows. Put the hazards on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember um, there was an anecdote, I think, from like the founder of Honda. Sure. About as he was as he was a young boy, uh, a cu- back when he was young and cars were a was little. Was called sk- Edward Honda? Uh, yeah, E Honda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The cars were a little uh, <laughs> cars were a little rarer, and he said a, a car drove by his house, and he ran outside, and there was like a little puddle of oil mm. which had leaked from a car, and he dipped his hands in it, and he sniffed it, and he said it smelled like the finest perfume, and he got kind of hooked on cars oh my i'm not sure that's a story i'd tell if i was uh that's yeah famous that's... ceo of a massive company but it's kind of saying like the car- cars are like in his in his blood mm. like you know part it, of it is now anyway that's yeah. a little bit weird i okay i can i can I'm a, I, I can improve <laughs> though i can agree with your love of the smell of petrol that's fine i will agree as far as i like i feel slightly kind of like fine. underwhelmed if i'm honest i that's feel fine. like your your petrol love hasn't kind of surpassed your love of soup for example. No, oh no, no, no I would no. I would rank no. soup as, as above petrol. But if the love of petrol is what you need to get you through the week, yes, then no, I, I guess it. we're all winners. I enjoy it very much. Okay, well my love is um a double jump in a video game. Oh that's a good one. Now we're talking. That's a good yeah, you see my I, eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like there is very little more satisfying in a game where you control a character mm. than having that additional control in the air. And I don't mean, I don't want to fly. I really don't want to fly. Like, flying in video games is often a nightmare. Or just, okay, whatever, I'm flying. Who cares? Double jump. There's, some, there's something special double about a double jump. No, that's where it's at. I yeah. enjoy a double jump with Knuckles, I used to. Oh, yes. Sonic ah, games. Could he double jump, though? He could. The double jump was a glide, or you yeah. would hook onto the wall. 
wants and yes, away. yes, to sort of do a second jump. But did he them. did he double jump or was the act of double jump switched him to gliding? I believe yes. What the the ah, answer of what so I don't believe said. it was a true double jump. Maybe well, not a true not, double jump. Not to but, be but the climate, but the climbing element technically mm. is a jump of sorts. So we could say double jump, parentheses, gliding and climbing. Secondary uh, flight movement mm. triggered yeah. by same button press. Yes, because I mean, <laughs> not not as literal as tails. In terms yes, of flying, because he used yeah. to fly. He, yeah. But I'm guessing, like, don't know how. It wasn't that much fun didn't, to play. It didn't really play as work it. the logistics of that. I'm guessing that kind of began life in, like, 2D platformers. Yeah. Uh, but it's also made to transition to, like, 3D games. It's almost like... more important than 3D, though. Like, because yeah. you've been playing Dishonored lately, and that's, got, that's got a double jump in it. Once oh. I unlocked it. Yes, true. You have to unlock a double jump. But it's like, mm. if you're playing a first person game and you're doing platforming, that's hard because you can't really see where your feet are and you don't have a real sense of where things are because they've already passed out of your vision as you're trying to leap to them. But a double jump allows you that extra capacity of, oh, I've slightly miscalculated that jump, let's pull it back in. And yeah, it just, I don't know, it's just so satisfying. Where do you stand on games trying to rationalise it in some way? Or is it better <laughs> just to not draw attention <laughs> Can to it? Can you give an example? Uh, what games rationalised well, it? Well, uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, Devil May Cry. Like, you had a double jump from a scar, but when you jumped the second time, for a split second, a little platform appeared under oh, your That's right, yeah. It's almost feet. like you made a phantom platform. Yeah, like you were summoning yeah. it, yeah. And there are some characters that have like a little jetpack. And yes. you see that burst for a second. Yes, which, so that makes a lot of yeah. sense. I don't care. I don't care if you have to. Rationalise or nay. Uh, double jump's all I care about. Just give me one. Because in, rea- <laughs> in reality, if you had it, that would be like the greatest. Yeah, I would, I'd love good, superpower. Yeah. I'd love a double jump. My problem would be landing. With the long jump, I'd be terrified you? of crushing my shins to dust as I landed. <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of take <laughs> <laughs> a perfect dismount onto a broken leg. <laughs> I think we kind of take that as granted, don't we? Like any superpower you have, you seem to gain the innate ability to, to survive it. To survive yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. often, thing like if you were, even if you had something like super strength. If your limbs themselves weren't proportionally yeah, tougher, mm, true. you might as well, oh, I'm going to lift that car. Your arm would just, just smash the piece of sheer in half. Yeah. yeah. So you're right. Okay. So yeah. So let's say if I, if I have it in the real world, I also have the body capability to withstand the pressure of it. You're going to bend your knees twice as much. I'd have the greatest life in the world. That'd be amazing. I think we've also talked, we've men. talked about this before, but not on air, that actually most uh, game characters have the greatest superpower known to man, which is that their perception is outside their body. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. It, yeah. So having like a free, like a third person camera living that way would actually be really kind of... I had this idea because uh, obviously um, I draw comics and... Um, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh. yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if you knew that. Oh. Um, and I wonder what we were surrounded by. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an idea for a superhero called Viewpoint. And that, ah. was, that was literally his thing. Like he could move his vision to anything else that had vision. So any other person or a camera, for example. Oh, that's kind of cool, then he could then he could like see himself. He could still be full, fully in control of himself, but all he could do is widen his viewpoint. Which that, is, that's just quite cool, I thought. That is kind of cool, actually. Yeah. I had an idea years ago for a superhero called Effigy, and his power was he could manifest through any rep- representation of man. Oh. Wow. So my so uh, like and ca- catch he, on fire. If there was, if you were, if, <laughs> so if you had a picture on the wall, yeah, uh, of which there are many in this room where Indeed. we are recording oh, now. Yes, yes. So you have a Guardians of the Galaxy poster behind you. Yeah, he yeah, could is. talk to you through Star Lord. In the poster. Oh, oh so the little Star Lord face would yeah. like animate and, and chat yeah. and talk. So he predominantly he'd be like a spy. But I also uh, had a scenario where he could possess like a statue and like make the statue come to life and stuff. Very cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Rev, do you have a superhero? Do you want to throw into the room? Um, or? I like, yes, I like the superheroes. <laughs> One actually I was just thinking of was Mario Kart. It's not a double jump as such, but you can, when you're going around corners and you skid in a certain way, or if you lift your steering wheel as it's you're going a over hop. a jump, you get a a double effect effectively ah, like do a little so that's always good so is it the double jump we love or is it the act of doubling something I think like I think it can extend to doing anything in the air that prolongs your time in the air yes right. like yeah. a, I was gonna well, I was gonna say double fart and then I was gonna say that doesn't work and then it actually kind of does <laughs> like, what if that was the explanation for your double jump you jump in the air then you do a mighty fart yeah. that pushes you even higher into the air that counts that would be good that. Then you fall to the ground, and whether or not you stuck the landing, you just need to lie down for a little bit. Your <laughs> <for a little. laughs> lungs are empty. Well, talking about superheroes, that was actually going to be my kind of love oh, for the week as well. Oh. My, my love was going to be foreign superheroes. Foreign. Uh, oh, I, I know, know, where, you're I know where you're going. Because <laughs> two superheroes have entered our lives lately, and we've come to love them quite a bit. We have uh, really, yeah, weirdly. Uh, Krish, who we've spoken about before. We've spoken about Krish. Uh, Krish, uh, who is uh, a Bollywood superhero. Oh my, he's just so beautiful. Who is just... possibly the most beautiful man alive. <laughs> Everyone listening, stop what you're doing right now. 
like go to a computer, Google Krish, spelled K double R I S H. And, and they just look at him. And I'm telling you, you don't even have to come back because the, ben- <laughs> the, the joy you'll get from him is so much greater than the remaining minutes of this show. <laughs> he's, he's on Netflix, isn't he? He is indeed. Yeah. All three of his movies are on yeah, and, okay, yeah. Netflix. And we discovered that they're working on Krish 4. Oh which I'm very word. excited about. And we're just beside ourselves with joy, actually. I mean, apparently the entire world I is... It, I thought it was Krish and then Krish 3. It was. Well, the first film is called Cold Nagaya. Yes, I right. Think, which, th- at that point, they didn't know they had a franchise on their okay. hands, I think. Then they made Krish, right. which was about the titular character's son. Um, and then, because it was the third movie in the series, they <laughs> called it Krish 3. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, they drew inspiration from Rambo. And I, oh. I've not seen any Rambo movies, but it, it's, Is that it's, so? it's Rambo. It's like First Blood featuring Rambo, Rambo, and then Rambo 3. Does Rambo do uh, that? Apparently so. Oh, apparently so, that. yeah. That's still stupid, though. They don't draw inspiration yeah, don't from something that's stupid. Like... <laughs> But um, uh, the other superhero yes. is a French superhero uh-huh. called Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> and we watched it. Sold. <laughs> we watched, it's, some episodes are on Netflix. It's animated. Yeah. It's yeah. really odd because I, I think it was like 26 episodes and only like nine are on Netflix. And it's like, a random nine in the wrong order. Yeah. And it's, right. it's charming as hell. It is. And we actually just kind of take, taken away with like uh, just the character design the inventiveness um, mm. it's not especially obnoxious like a lot of kind of kids very, programs very family friendly yeah. isn't it yeah and yeah, it's all just... set in Paris it kind of champions France quite nicely yeah it's all yeah, P- Parisian superheroes very good and yeah just you don't of... see a lot of Parisian superheroes no. you do not no, no funny that not enough I don't think no yeah. there was a um, Batman friend sort of ally Batman. some kind of Batman <laughs> <laughs> they did a there's like a story from like the 30s or 40s with Batman called like the Batman of many nations oh, and yeah. it was about all Batman. the heroes around the world who'd uh, been inspired by Batman and the French version was called the Musketeer uh, <laughs> and he didn't really look like Batman he just he had he looked like a, a musket looked like a musketeer and yeah. a sword and everything oh yeah so I uh, genuinely I well I think Krish is just Krish ast- astonishingly beautiful <sighs> I mean, it's great as well because the movies are on average about 4 hours long yeah each. oh god <laughs> yeah um, and they move at a snail's pace, but it's fine because he's on screen and we can just look at him. <laughs> and, His beautiful uh, face. Yeah, and, and it all gradually gets to the point where some action starts to happen. Um, but there's just so many brilliant musical numbers in there. Oh, yeah. There's an interval, like there's <laughs> genuine intermission where the movie stops and we get a, uh, like a, a freeze frame of Chris stood over a cityscape and it just says intermission. In massive <laughs> yeah. chrome letters. Well, we were a bit confused because it cuts to him suddenly just leaping from building to building and we're like, oh, what's this? Is, is this a scene? And uh-huh. he just comes to a sudden stop and it says intermission. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it just pauses there for a second and then it carries on. But we think about Chris is that like, given, I know, you know, you saying like every movie is like four hours long. Yeah. But there's, until the third one, there's not actually a massive amount of super heroics like that. <laughs> not at all. Because the first movie is like a heartwarming E.T. esque story. Oh, okay. There's no superheroes in it, but there are like aliens and stuff. Yeah. The second one, he, you know, it's some, like an origin story. Yeah, he becomes a hero, but like yeah. two hours By into the, the movie, end. he yeah. becomes the hero. Maybe three hours. And then he fights like a few <laughs> random ninjas. Yeah. And and then saves the day. And yet we we can forgive it. Like we're not. It sounds like a criticism, but it's really not. The the main character, uh, Krish, as played by Hrithik. Roshan yes. it's just the most compelling you just love, <laughs> he's, like, he's a really good actor as well yeah, like, he's, he's got a great emotional range and you just, like, and you just get behind him you just, yeah, like, I'm so I'm, invested I'm absorbed in this yeah. root for him but then the third one they fully leaned into it and you've got like buildings falling down and like <laughs> massive telekinetic yeah. battles and oh, man. It's, great. it's really good it's just nice to see like a different culture taking what is such like a kind of American yeah, yeah. jazz and just putting their own vibe on it and yeah. get something a bit fresh out of it you do actually yeah, yeah. it's also just a little it's a little weird. It's a little different, and, and you like it. Yeah, it's, it's good, good. Weird. So yeah, that's your homework, people. Check yeah. out Miraculous Ladybug. Yeah. And see if you can resist singing along to the theme tune, and 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 Krish. <laughs> Definitely check them both out. Go get some dance numbers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in the <laughs> desert. Well, I guess uh, to yeah. it's boy ago. We found some love. We found some love. The smell of petrol and yes. watching Bollywood. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we found some love because it's a weird show this, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know what's depressing? I don't think we have many loves at no, all. Actually, there you go. Uh, from... well, I've I've got a love from uh, from a, from social media, from uh, my good friend Andrew, um, and he he spun this as an interesting one because he said this is both a love and a hate. Okay, right. Um, in in equal measure, and it's literally just this: dogs. Right, dogs. He, yeah, he loves dogs. Okay, he absolutely loves them. His family has had dogs, and he's fallen in love with the dogs that his family's I, had. I love dogs, but he says. 
that he hates them because when they leave you, i.e. they die, and this sadly happens, it is just the worst thing in the world. It is and, and then horrific. It just, and then it just switches to, like, how could you do this to me? Almost. Now, I'm not saying that it's the dog's fault. No. But the resultant no. emotional fallout from uh, the loss of a dog is immense. It looks like Chris is agreeing with me here. No, I... Yes. I, I we, it's horrific yeah. when your dog dies. I, I, we've both lost kind of family dogs in the last couple of years. And yeah, yeah, it's... it's See, pretty... I've never been a dog. I've never had a dog as a family. I've never been a dog person, but I can totally get behind this. I think the problem is like a dog, nothing but love. Yeah. Like, yeah, this I, is I, the I, thing, I, isn't dogs it? just love you. Yeah, a dog will love you unconditionally. Cats, yeah. you know, will tolerate you. Cats yeah, do their own thing. They, yeah. they, you're just their staff. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's why I cannot, I feel like, you know, if you humans... can't explain it to them. Yeah. If humans are being cruel to humans, we're, we're a doomed species anyway. But like, if you, yeah. cruelty to a dog, I can't. It's it's that whole that like yeah they they don't they, they don't know they don't understand the world they don't understand why you're doing what you're doing and then and, and they, all they think is well why you know I love you why don't you love me what what's going on it's very sad yeah I can I can get that it's like it's it's a love but I hate how much I love it like, yeah it's too it's I think too that's much. what he's getting at I think it's like I hate yeah, how I much I, think I, I, love I think I'm it. with yeah. him on that yeah well do we want something a little less heavy maybe that was <laughs> heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just need to go <laughs> yeah cry loud Andrew yeah. Yeah, leave him laughing. Um, New balls of wool in unexpected colours. Ah, right, yes, yeah. What is an unexpected colour of for wool? Um, mauve? Indigo? So is, is she... Because this is Tina again. This is Tina, it? yeah. Uh, is she suggesting that she went out to buy orange wool, she came home with 20 balls of orange wool, and in the middle somewhere was an emerald wool? Or is she saying she was uh... just going about her business and there's just a ball of wool like, in front of you? Taunting her. Yeah. Like, buy me. Look at me. Like look the Zodiac Killer is kind of my... just saying, catch me. <laughs> look at my sapphire strands. I find wool as a material quite irritating. <laughs> not, not not, in terms of I dislike it, but oh, in terms of on my, on I'm, my skin. I'm with you there. Like, Biologically I, I, I got a sweater once for Christmas mm. and it was unwearable. It, yeah. was, it was like wearing a hissing sack. It's just it was... a bit too clammy. Yeah. Ugh. I think that grosses me out as well. It's like um, yeah, fishermen wear wool as well. It's meant to be mm. quite insulating. But the idea is that you're meant to get it wet and keep it wet. Yeah. And, and that well, forever. Well, not not for, you can change at some point. But it's like you know, I've got a busy night on the boat. You know, waves are going to be crashing over. I've got my galoshes. I've got my cagoule. You know, I've got my, my uh, I've got my wool <laughs> on. I mean, it's like wave hits you. You're instantly soaked. But, but then the wool okay. traps the water and keeps you warm. Oh, okay. And I just like. Ugh. Just, yeah, but that's yeah, a, yeah, that does sound gross. That does sound a bit gross. Ah, oh, disgusting. Probably some algae in there, no, some no, moss I, and stuff. I I appreciate the sentiment, but I don't like wool. I don't. What like about wool. sheep? What do you like sheep? I like. She, I had a, some lamb last night. It was delicious. It was delicious. Yeah, I so I feel yes, yeah. I feel as a transition because like sheep in a field, don't mind it. You know, sheep on the plate, it's lovely. You know, uh, ball of wool, delightful. Who doesn't enjoy? Holding a ball, a ball of wool, like a kitten, for example. Sweater. Mm. Stay away. No, suddenly you lost me already. <laughs> okay, how about another one from our good friend Liz? Oh. Uh, Autumn mornings. Oh, That's oh a nice yes. One. Certain okay. poetry to this, actually. I feel Liz is elevating us to a higher class of podcast. <laughs> uh, we should probably get her on as a guest. My love yes. is autumn mornings. If only we could find her. <laughs> like, like this morning. So I guess there probably was some context there at the point when she was writing. Oh, uh, like this morning, sunny but fresh. You can wrap, but warm. Enjoy the crunchy leaves and beautiful colours in the trees. What a delight. Oh, that does rhyme. Oh, nice. yeah, very good. No, yeah. Very talented. Well, I often find summer too hot, if anything. Yeah. Well, you, well, you burn. I burn yeah. horrendously. You've got a Capri Sun, you burn. <laughs> <Just looking laughs> <at> it, <yeah. laughs> the suggestion of sunlight burns me. Um, no, I would. I get on board with that. I feel like she's dropping hints. <laughs> what's she saying take me for a walk take me for a walk yeah <laughs> I uh, I um, was commenting just yesterday like an old man how much I liked September's because it's generally sunny and windy yeah. at the same time you yeah can, you can and it's like it's, be it's nice. it'd be just a nice weather isn't it it's cold but it's crisp yes yeah and the leaves underfoot are crisp should we end on a particularly heartwarming one? Oh, go oh, on okay because I think we have to give a little shout out to uh, Jan Nicholas uh, or Jan Nicholas I do apologise. I know, sorry, my apologies if you're listening, Jan. He's a slash Jan. He's a J A N. He's a German fellow, so it maybe it's, it's a it's soft, y- soft Jan. Jan. Yeah. Jan. Yeah. Let's say Jan. Jan Nicholas, uh, lovely chap, good, uh, uh, good supporter of everything we do. Who says that his loves are books, comics, oh, nice. and my little niece. Ah. Because when I hold her and see her laugh, I'm happy. That's lovely. That's very nice. I have two nieces, and I feel it's the not same. A competition. No, no, I'm just saying. I, no, I it's can relate knees. to that. It's pronounced knees. Oh, oh. Yeah. so head, shoulders, <laughs> knees, and toes is always wrong. Then. 
It's very nice. That's yes, very nice, nice of you yeah. to say. Uh, but no, I, that's lovely. I mean, that we've, nice. I mean, we've not met his niece. I mean, maybe she's a particularly good example of a, of, of a niece, a really good niece. Yeah, yes, she's yeah, a textbook niece. Yeah, but you know, I, I can salute that. You know, it's better than cheese, is what I'm saying. Like we, yeah, I, think what, what we, I mean, we all said food last week, and he's he's just smashed us out of the water with that. Yeah. One. I made a conscious effort for mine not to be food this time. My yeah, that, that's why. Yeah. I, we may that's have why all I could come up with was petrol. Because because the only. It's not food, it's petrol. The only being is that's all I had. The thing is, you have now tasted the turkey nuggets, which we talked about at the last uh, <sighs> I'm going to have to get yeah, you and you are. You, they are good. You and Lizzie yeah. cook these because they are good. Ali missed out as well because she was doing. She sampled one before she left. She's doing sport. Yeah. Sport. God, they're good. They're getting really yeah, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. Yeah, they're oh, great. Oh, man. We'll set a date. Lovely. Yeah. Anyway, should we um, Let's round it up. wrap it up? Well, um, I think, uh, do we feel like love or hate one out this time round? I feel like love did. I, yeah. I do, but. But I felt very passionate during our hate discussions. I, I, I'm glad we always are. Yeah. Think, yeah, I'm glad that we start with hate. <laughs> yeah, it means I, we we turn it into something. I feel lovely, I feel it. happier for having done this. So let's go with love. Okay, love, and I and even in the midst of hate, like we found some joy with Tesco's advertising campaign. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that was amazing. that was. So I think we should all just go to tipped. Tesco's and buy some quality products. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. not sponsor. Hashtag not sponsor. But please, sponsor us. Please, please, Tesco, get in contact if you want. We'll um, we'll write you a song. <laughs> so, have we got a sign out? Do you want to? How do we bring this to an end? Um, do, 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 do. No, that's grain chill. No, still grain still chill. Still grain right? chill. <laughs> Always grain chill. So, open your heart to hate? Question mark. No, the show you love to. We that we got close to that, didn't we? we like last. The show you love to love to hate. Lo- love who you who you want to hate, but also hate them. Don't be late. Choose hate? Uh, yeah. Okay. Don't, yes. Death from above, here comes love. <clears throat> Don't be late, here comes hate. I'm just going to... I'm going to...